<laughs> I'd like to take a minute and make sure I make eye contact with people. <laughs> we have it here. Okay. Complete. <laughs> so Britt Backrack, a composer, died a couple of months ago. He wrote a lot of songs that were really popular in the 60s. And when he passed away, I thought, you know, I uh, song what's it all about, Alfie? Mm -hmm. And um, I thought, well, I should learn all the words to that. Uh, every once in a while, I make it a hard project to learn the words to a song that you sort of know, but you forget after the first line. So I did. So let's all sing it together, shall we? <laughs> what? Only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you got scared for a second, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. I watched the movie Alfie as well. I'd never seen it. It's about a selfish guy who uses people. Not really special. <laughs> but we're very much in the habit of using the word what a lot. And as I encounter it, it very often has a negative connotation. Like, what are you, crazy? Uh, what are you, deaf? Good Lord, woman, what were you thinking? <laughs> what are you, stupid? What do you think you're doing? You know, there's a lot of them. And it winds up being very negative. There's a fellow that's done some work. So I'm going to take a 180 degree turn now. Watch this. <laughs> we're not going to talk about what, we're going to talk about why. <clears throat> because why is a high value question. What is a low value question? There's a gentleman named Simon Sinek who uh, has done a TED talk. Mike knows about this. Sure, of course, you're that kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, and his whole outlook on life and as an organizational consultant and teacher is start with why. If you haven't watched that talk on TED, TED talk, TED.org, I really recommend it because it has large implications and it has personal micro implications as well. If you asked me, what are you doing here? Well, the only thing I could tell you is, well, what am I doing here? Well, I, I'm here to talk on Sunday, is what I'm doing here. If you said, what brings you here? I would say, well, my car. <laughs> How do we have a conversation? You don't, it's a dead end. What is always a dead end? As an opening, you ask me why I'm here. I can have a really long conversation about that, which I will spare you today. <laughs> <laughs> but the deep why I'm here is that this opportunity is the fulfillment of my personal mission statement. And, you know, as I even say that aloud, I think, well, tell me more. What's your personal mission statement? And it's to share what I love and teach what I know. And so this opportunity, my why on this particular day is to be in fulfillment of my personal mission statement. There are other reasons as well. Why am I here? Why do we come here? Because we value each other. You know, I like to say there was nothing, nothing good about COVID. There were many blessings though that came from the quarantine. And some of those blessings for me was an enriched awareness of how much I love to be with other like-minded people. And to be deprived of that um, didn't have a negative impact on my life, but it was a diminishment to my everyday experience. And it makes me appreciate all the more 
this opportunity that we do have because you know in the back third of your brain we're just at, we're animals and we're pack animals we need to be around other animals of our particular species that's what we're wired for and so it's a deep deep satisfaction so why i'm here today I mean, I can tell me about me, tell you about me because I can't tell you about you. I don't know you. So we used to say in the South, I don't know all y'all yet <laughs> to talk about you. So I can talk about me a little bit. Why did I seek out this teaching to begin with? Uh, in 1985. Because I was suffering. I was 32 at the time. I had started out okay. But once I got into the more adult complex world, things weren't going so well. And then things went badly. And there were simple things about life that I just didn't get. And I know that I'm not alone in that. We don't get a lot of truth teaching and support in this culture. And many of us, if not most of us, in our homes, we get a lot of those sassy reprimands. We don't get a lot of support. And so many of us grow up without the basic tool and insight about how to succeed and be healthy and have an adult fulfilling life. That's why I sought out this true truth teaching. I was a seeker and when I came into New Thought, I knew that I had found it, what I was looking for. Expanding that why am I here? Why was I attracted to truth teachings? And we can open up that circle a little bit and we say, well, why does this teaching exists and why does this church this particular church exist the answer to the why if you go back and go back and go back and go back the answer is because people suffer too it wasn't just me i have a rabbi friend who once we were talking about something i don't remember who it was but he looked at me he said, you know, John, planet Earth, this is a tough incarnation. <laughs> and I went, yeah, it is. Come on. And it's so worth it. It's so worth whatever it costs us to be on this planet. But it is tough if you don't know what the rules are. So why is this church here? I'm gonna riff for a minute on the newsletter. Does everybody get the newsletter? You can pick one up right by the door if you don't have one. Your, all your announcements are on here. But <laughs> your unity of Bernie <laughs> Valley, your mission statement is actually very rich and is loaded with information. Community of Verde Valley is a heart-centered community. Why? Because it's tough to do it alone. We acknowledge that. And being together is the satisfaction of that need. <clears throat> Inspiring spiritual growth. Why do you need to grow spiritually? So you have a rewarding human experience while you're on this planet is why. So you can dare to do things that you would have previously been afraid to do. So you can grow in compassion and understand the essential unity of the family, what we used to call the family of man. We inspire spiritual growth through faith. Why faith? 
because it's easy to lose sight of the goal. And it's good to be reminded. I mean, once a week is not nearly enough to be reminded of what we came here to do, what we hope for from our highest heart, what expectations we can reasonably have as we make increasing demands on ourselves to reach out to humanity in greater ways and therefore by enriching ourselves. We also grow through prayer. Why, why, why do we pray? Well, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a New Yorker by birth and I always thought my life would have been perfect if I had only been born Jewish, but <laughs> there's a Catholic school, kindergarten through the first year of college. But there's a Yiddish expression, you know, it says from your mouth to God's ear, right? Like it should only happen. You should be so lucky. Where is God's ear? Don't make me do this. <laughs> if not your ear, who? Who's Who's listening? But the greater sense of yourself, your soul, that higher power that is you, that is your reason and your motivation. And the ultimate goal is to be in a holy communion with that of each of us in quoting Christ, I think we say in unity, that is truly perfect, whole, complete knows no lack and no limitation of any kind. So we learn to speak the word to remind ourselves. Does the spoken word have power? Sure. That's been my experience. Yes, it has power. And then gratitude. Why do, why, why do we have gratitude as a practice? What's the why behind that? Because again, it's so easy to forget how good we have it. And we can go in a downward spiral so fast. Just being in the heat, you can complain about it all you want and praise God we've got air conditioners. This is not true for most of planet Earth. We are drowning in an abundance of riches here. And it's great to always be reminded of that. And we are reminded of that and we are strengthened in that by whatever gratitude practice that we choose to embrace. Giving to this church, giving to the food bank, sharing of our surplus. We all have surplus. Calling a friend. Because we all like to know that we're remembered. There are any numbers of gratitude practices that you can a million of them. So, you know, I think the why of this church is firmly established. Kind of your vision, mission statement. Right in your mission statement. Let's go another step beyond me, beyond church, and then into history. So, if you ask the question why, why are the truth teachings? We've talked about that. Why did Jesus come? Anybody out there have the answer to that perennial question? As an example. Uh, as an example. And in his words, he said, it is written, I am come. So that you have life and have it more abundantly. Why is that his why would that be his why statement? <laughs> because life is tough. And human nature being what it is, we forget that we can, that all that we need individually is already, the kingdom of God is within, at hand. We, over and over, these statements from Jesus address the why. How you do it, I don't care. <laughs> what you do it, just do it. But the why statement is so important 
because human nature requires a daily, I don't want to say struggle, because it's not a struggle, but it's an opportunity every day to get up, to remember what our business is about, what we're here to do, what's possible, and that, yes, we are adequate to the task of our own lives. If you're not adequate to the task in your life, who would be? <laughs> right? <laughs> that sounds facetious, but it's a very sincere question. Of course you have all you need to be you. Duh. <laughs> you know, you don't have you don't have anything that you need to be Taylor Swift. She's doing that. <laughs> you have all that you need to be you. So how do you choose to express that? Right? How do you want to do that? And that's for everyone to decide. But you know, even in that, because I, I admit, I have to look things up. So I looked up, I am come that you might have life, John 10, 10, right? And that's not the whole statement. The statement begins, <coughs> the thief comes to steal. That's dark. Come on, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, which shines light on such an incredibly important notion. The thief, in quotations, however you define that, is someone with no skill, no imagination, no vision, no hope, so they steal. By contrast, we are being told that you have the vision, you have the inspiration, you have the skill, you have the ideas, you have the hope. Please feel free to use them. Individually and then globally. Why? Did Russia invade Ukraine? Well, if you take your time with a philosophical question like why, it's because they have no hope for the future. They have no vision. They have no inspiration. So they think the only way to augment what we have is to steal them. And that had been human nature <coughs> forever. More sophisticated people who are thinking about these questions, history in a philosophical way. Say so pretty much until World War II, that had been the way of the world forever. If one has any kind of self-reliance, any kind of notion that I don't need to kill you, need to steal what you have. I can do that. I can create my good. If you don't have that as a fundamental soul level understanding, then you are going to be homeless. Then you are <coughs> going to do violence as opposed to justice. It's pretty compelling stuff. It's got global implications when we ask, when, when we start with why. It has global implications and personal ones. So, you know, I can't answer these questions for you. I can only answer questions for me. But why are you here? Well, because I'll go anywhere where I can get a cup of free coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll put you on my prayer list if that's your issue. <laughs> why, why are you here? Because I know you, you know, just like just like me. You enjoy the company of people with similar values. Just like me, just like Jesus, just like Dr. Kim, just like whomever you 
it might just like them we desire that too and then what would you like to do with it what would you like to do about it it's not a homework assignment but it's the reason that we come together to hear some kind of message to chew on so what you're working on what are you hoping for this is practical spirituality. Why does unity and unity of Verde Valley teach practical spirituality? Because mythological spirituality wasn't getting the job done. <laughs> <laughs> right? If it doesn't work at the grocery store, what the heck is the point <laughs> to keep you afraid? Yeah, I said that out loud. So. <laughs> so what would you like to do with your life? From where you are right this very minute, what are you hoping for? What are you working on? What are you seeking to heal? What's your next best idea? Not your second best idea but the next great idea that you have for you, because your why, your why is pulling you in that direction. Consciously and subconsciously. So get, get in tune with what your why. Why was I incarnated at this time in this body on this planet? Well, the big answer is so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And you might do well as a human being. And in our individual pursuit to do well, we advance the entire species. It only, it only happens one person at a time. But the more of us that engage in meaningful adult spiritual work, we advance the whole planet by being here. And if you don't have a great reason why at this minute, then go back to maybe what? And come up with a positive answer. You know, the song, What's It All About, Alfie, is, you know, what, what is it all about? It's about learning to give and receive love. To give and to receive in equal measure. And the more we practice doing that, the more our capacity increases, right? What's it all about? I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what the creator had in mind. Or what the creator's impetus was for creating humanity. In the Hindu tradition, it is written that the great one, the Atman, was frankly bored. So started splitting its own soul into trillions of expression because he was bored. Good enough reason. <laughs> Good enough. But for those of us here, boredom is such a low value yeah. experience <laughs> of life. I think. I can't think. All right. Let's, let's take that wacky idea into meditation, shall we? <laughs> so if you choose, I invite you to close your eyes so you won't be distracted by the beautiful and friendly faces all around you. <laughs> but know that they're there. And give thanks that we have this opportunity to be together. Give thanks for the warmth of smiles. Give thanks for the generosity of others. Give thanks for those who serve. 
Give thanks to yourself to have the wisdom to simply show up and contribute what you do contribute to this ministry. Pray. Pray with every breath. Pray the truth. And the truth is that no matter what is going on on our planet, at the level of soul, well, all is well. Life is good. And we are truly blessed. And finally, on the race, fight the good fight and keep the faith. Breathe deep. And together, the people said, Amen. 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 God bless you, friends. Thanks so much. Thank you.